everybody and bless the Lord. I'm ready. Come on, let's bless the Lord. You can sit there and be quiet. The anointing is here. Amen. See, see I, don't, I don't do, you know, when I was at the, uh, the uh, 945 service, I, I didn't need another prayer at the 11 o'clock. Because folks may have left, but folks may have come in, but the presence of the Lord was still here. All we need to do is just flow into the neck. That's all. Every round goes. Open the Bibles, please, to the book of Psalm. To the 18th Psalm. Very familiar. And I've been hearing the confirmation since Saturday night. Amen. To Psalm 18. So when I heard Apostle this morning, I said, Lord, don't let him go into that scripture, please. But he started getting real close. He started. I, I listen, he was bumping into it. Hallelujah. But Psalm 18, very familiar portion of scripture. When you have it, say amen. amen. Those that are still looking, I didn't get my testimony. I thank God for being saved and sanctified. Bless the Holy Ghost, having the body burning fire, and running by day and prayer by night. And I'm determined to make heaven my home. All right. Oh, then, come on, but I, I, I knew if I went old school, if I, you got you got to quit it. You got to shake your head. You got to, I'm determined. You got to get serious. You got to make a frown on your face. I'm y'all not gonna like me. I'm just a, I'm just a nobody that just keep it real with. Me. I'm not one of those that you see all deep in the pulpit, then you run into me in the street, and I'm a totally different person. Oh Hell, y'all, y'all don't understand. Y'all gonna pray for this boy up here. Amen. 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 In Psalm 18, in Psalm 18, we have a Psalm of David as he was fleeing from Saul. But look at verse 29, and trust me, I know you sacrificed to be here tonight and to give throughout this weekend. But if you would just be with me for the next, can we do 20 minutes? Yeah. That might include some praise. Amen. Will you just bear with me for 20 minutes? Amen. Now, if you sit there and don't say anything, it's going to push me to want to go deep. If you get if you get with me, that's let me know I can move on. See, I, I preach and I can get stuck on one little bit because I don't think you got it. So I'm, I'm determined. I have to make sure you get it. Y'all don't hear me. See, I also teach. I don't just teach Bible. <laughs> Amen. I teach students in the Christian school. So it's just a few things that the Lord is doing in our life. Uh, in Psalm 18, beginning read of verse 29, and the psalmist says, For by you, referring to God, for by you I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Look at, uh, come on, come on, straight up. Verse 31 says, For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock? Save our God. Verse 32. It is God that girdeth me with strength mm, and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and sets me upon my high places. Oh my God. Here, Verse 34 and 35. He teacheth my hands to war. Will somebody read that please? He teacheth my hands. Let's get out of King James and say, he teach my hands to fight. He teach my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by my arms. And verse 35, you have also given me the shield of your salvation. And your right hand have hold me, have held me up and your gentleness have made me great. I think it's time now that we stop talking about the war that the enemy is waging on us and how we're in such a struggle. Can I just preach? I, I think we need to stop going there in our testimonies and in our messages. And I think we need to turn that thing around and we need to let the devil know that we have we are waging war on him. Oh, come on, somebody. I just want to use a little topic. I, I, I'm not worried about a fancy topic because I'd rather you focus on the substance of the word and not just a snappy topic. Amen? But I want you to look at three people right quick and help me announce my text and just tell them you were made for war. I'm going to tell three people you were made for war. How many believe that in here tonight? See, there's a reason why I saw different ones dancing and different ones going forth in the spirit. And there is a reason why we continue to persist 
in what we do in our uh, our praise and in our worship because we are looking for more from God than just sitting in church and waiting on empty promises. Hmm? I don't know about you, but some of y'all need to stop falling out the floor and being prophesied to every week because you already got God's word on your life. And what you need to do now is say, God, I got it. Go ahead and give it to somebody else now. Because we will sit up in church and drain all of the gift and all the word out of one vessel when all of that needs to go into other vessels. Some of us are filled and don't realize how filled we are. Y'all not going to like me, but this is what I do. We are already filled, but we come here and act like I'm still going through. I'm still busted and disgusted. I'm still mad at folk, but then you have a word for people. You got to take your attitude. You got to take your lack of faith. And you have to go somewhere and sit down with it and let God raise up somebody that really needs. Let God show the man of God who really needs a word from the Lord. I only want to talk to warriors. And, and see, I knew uh, that the last service, the night service, would be for those that are here for the battle. Yeah. All right. Which might mean there's more room for us to shout. Yeah. Which might mean there's more room for us for deliverance. Which might mean there are fewer demons to battle so that those who will lack order like a dog can get up and get the victory. I want you just to run the three people and just tap them. Don't shake hands, but just tap them and say, I'm here for the victory. I want to ask you to get up and come on, young folks. Get up and run the three people and say, I'm here for the victory. I'm not here to show off. I'm not here to perform. I'm not even here to preach my best sermon. I'm just here for the victory in Tallahassee. You know how I know that? Because not only did I bring victory with me, but in here I'm standing in the place of victory. I told you I'm going to hurry up and get out of your way. We have to understand something, that with all that we are hearing from God, it is preparing us, as we discussed earlier, for what God is doing in these end times. So what's important for us, and, and this is my little pet peeve, forgive me preachers if I'm stuck on your toes, but I'm so tired of the he's going to fix it prophecies, the he's going to fix it sermons. I'm tired of you, come, listen, many of you, you already come to church feeling good in your spirit. You had great encounter with God on your way to church. Just and then the praise and worship. There you are giving God glory just for the preacher to get up and bring you down to tell you what you're going through. Honey, if what I was going through could stop me, I wouldn't even be here. But because it can't stop me, I don't need you to preach to my emotions. I can already be an emotional wreck. All by myself. Where, where are my witnesses at in here? But what I need is some affirmation to what I've already perceived in the spirit. Do we understand this? So what we have to understand is that there before you even got saved, but at the time of your birth, not only did God have determined that you would be born. Now watch this. Here's the crazy thing. Because it's whether you were born in a Christian family. It's whether you were born in a marriage. Or even if you were born in wedlock. Even if you were born in the only one in the family that's saved. There is a cosmic conspiracy to who you are and what you're destined for. I'm just looking for which side of the church to preach on. There is a cosmic conspiracy. The enemy has already sought because he's not God. Only the folks in the church give him that kind of power and authority. But he is not God. But because Satan is also spirit, he sees what we don't see in the natural. So when we tap into our spiritual gifts, the enemy, that's his name, that's who he is. The enemy is also there seeing the same thing. You don't believe me? Look at the book of Job. The Bible says when the sons of God appeared before God, guess who else showed up? So there is still some access that I'm still trying to figure out. Lord, how come he has access now? He does not have access to the throne of God. But he have access to atmospheres. And for you and I to perceive God, it has to come from the throne of God, the face of God, through atmos layers of atmospheres to get to our spiritual being for us to comprehend 
don't understand. You know what? I'm enjoying myself in here, but this thing is deeper than he's going to fix it. This thing is deeper than by this time tomorrow. I got so tired. There's a preacher I preached for in Philadelphia, and every time we went there, by Wednesday, the Lord said, by Wednesday, by Wednesday, and Wednesday would come and nothing changed. So, so you know what? I, I, I got hit to it real quick. I said, oh, I know what Wednesday means. That means all that we sold in his church, the check's clear by Wednesday. <laughs> that, that's what, so he was up there. He was feeling good in the spirit for himself. By Wednesday, I could get me another vestment made. By Wednesday, I could get another suit. By Wednesday, I could go downtown for another prayer. Y'all don't like what I'm saying, but it's time for you right now to understand that I am only in the middle of a cosmic conspiracy. And it is hell against heaven. It is the forces of God, which is light, against the forces of darkness. If you have been here all weekend, you know you've been hearing this ongoing theme every service. The enemy wants to stop your joy. The enemy wants to block your faith. He wants to hinder your progress. But you have to make up in your mind, I've been redefined. <laughs> I'm not just showing up for another service. I've been redefined. And because my re redefinition is, uh, I'm aware of it in my natural, in my physical, in my mental, in my spiritual, the enemy now, that in order for him to change anything that God has predestined for your life, the enemy will have to go all the way back to the creation of man and mess it up there. Yes, in Genesis 3, he messed it up in the garden, but he did not mess it up in the original creation. So when you see the devil really waging war on you, I'm about to sit down, really waging war on you like never before, understand this. It's because there is a new perspective in you. There is new creation in you. But the enemy cannot stop the original intent of God. Just look at somebody right quick and say, oh, I'm not going to sit on this one. Say I was made for war. I don't know about y'all in here. I heard your testimony this morning, but I'm so tired of Christians talking about when I was in the world. You didn't want to mess with me, and I was this and that. But then you come to church, you just want to be a big punk. Can I say that in this pulpit? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, to the true saints, you got your got your hat on and everything. I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, Pastor. I, I won't come to your church and use that language. Okay, but he said this all. He says, but but we gotta stop being like punks. As a matter of fact, I preached at our church on, on the Sunday morning. Don't punk me out. Don't look at me because I'm saved and think that I'm passing. Don't look at me and think because I'm saved I'm going to tolerate anything. No, I am saved. I'm not just saved to miss hell. That's how I got saved. When I got saved back in the days because I didn't want to go to hell. But I stay saved because I love God. Y'all don't like my language. Hell is not even on the table anymore. Because I come to know who Jesus is for myself. And it's not about what he can do for me. Tell somebody, I can tell you what he's already done. So what's happening is, I'm trying to hurry up. I didn't watch, look at my watch when I got up there telling myself. But what we got to look at is this. God is causing you. To receive a bounce back anointing. Yeah, Jesus Jesus. No, I don't have no scripture that says bounce and anointing. I don't have any of that. But I'm telling you the truth. It's a bounce back anointing. Because the devil already wrote you off. But you won't stay dead. The devil already wrote you off. And I got the wrong folks in here tonight. But, it, but because it has to go beyond this building. The enemy already wrote you off. But you keep getting convicted in your spirit and coming back to the face of God. You know how when we were saying, I love you, Jesus. Uh-huh. 
And when we were singing that song, that gets personal with me. Because I sat right here and began to have conversation with the Lord. And I said, God, you know I love you. Because if I could go wrong, I still come back to you. When I did, when I was tripping, I stumbled my way back to his face. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. People see, you mess up and people say, I thought you loved the Lord. Honey, if I'm back in here, it's because I do. don't get it. They don't get it. They think because you love God, you should never mess up. You should never have a lack of faith. You should never miss the mark. But honey, you still see me showing up. It's because I love God. Because if I love my mess better than God, I'll never come back in you. Do I have a real witness in here tonight? I'm trying to pace myself. I gotta work with my lungs, my my age. I gotta work. I gotta work with the, with all that's in me. But you gotta understand that there is a cosmic conspiracy. But you better be like Shirley Caesar's and Satan. Oh, I don't got no old folks in here. Satan, we're gonna tear your kingdom down. Somebody shout! It's coming down. Oh my God, in here. Right now, right now. Look at the person on your row across from you. Just find somebody that look like they not sleep, but man, look, find somebody that look like they want to be here tonight. And just look at them and say, uh huh. Now, this is what I want you. I want you to put on your discerning face. Uh huh. Come on, put your discerning face on. Yeah, there you go. That, not rolling the eyes, just your. You got to squint, look like you're seeing something. Come on, you got to squint. And if you really want to be funny, it look like you're looking at the wall behind them. Y'all don't want to mess with me. Who invited me down here in Florida acting like this? <laughs> Listen at this. But just, did you, did you look at the person? Did you put on your deserted face? Yeah, just, just let them know. I see you. Tell them I see you. Saying I got a word for you. God is moving you from victim. Now y'all don't want to say it. Now, God is moving you from being a victim to being a victor. Oh my God. And I know they want you to shout about it, but this is something you just got to know. Do I have a witness that can raise your hand in the air? I know you want me to spin around like a top, but right now I'm standing flat footed. Because every time I move, I miss something. Every time I move, I didn't stay long enough to receive something. But this time I'm letting the devil know. It's not my emotions responding to you. It's my knowledge of who God is. Lord, I wish I had the strength right now. In, in the book of Psalm 44, in the 44 Psalm in verse number 5, the scripture says, Through you will I pu push down our enemies through your name will we tread them under that rise up against us the sixth verse says for I will not trust in my bow neither shall my sword save me in verse 8 he says in God we will boast all the day long and praise your name forever watch this then it says Selah okay now let's get deep on something you already know this that word salah is a musical term. And I don't know how, how many of our musicians or you read music, but whenever there is in the, on the sheet music, there is a thing called a rest. And a rest is just a little black symbol. And, and for the keyboarders, it means don't, it does some people think rest means don't play anything, but rest means actually take your hands off the keys. Come on. Uh, uh, Come on. I got you. Take your hands off of the keys, yeah. pause, and then go back to playing. There's some things we have to pause from and recognize the power of the pause. Recognize the doctrine in the pause. Recognize what God is saying and doing in the pause. Some people see you not doing anything, but what, are they, what they are underestimating is that God just have you on a seasonal pause. It doesn't mean I lost anything. Oh, Y'all not helping me in here. 
I'm going to get out your way real soon. It doesn't mean because you're not shouting and speaking in tongues and making noise that you're not who you were or that you lost anything. It just means that God has me on pause to ponder my next level. Watch this. Whenever God is speaking to you before the pause, he wants you to pause so it can sink in so the praise can continue at another level. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. So so I have to say this. I wanna, I'm going to skip a whole lot, but I have to say this because I must be able to rest tonight knowing that I've said what the people needed to hear. You have to understand that each of you right now, regardless of your age, you are called to walk uniquely in this generation. You, you want to hear all oh, the Lord going to do this But you need to know what your direction And instructions are right now And God is calling you for a unique walk Right now You cannot embrace the next anointing And still not commit it 100% to God You cannot be prophetic And not, not pathetic You cannot be prophetic And have no idea what God is saying About our next Pastor, I'm just tired of every prophetic word about my current. That's not prophecy. If you're telling me something I already know, it's called word of knowledge or word of wisdom. But prophecy is telling me about my next move. Not my next level of income. Not that I still like other gifts. But when God is dealing with you at another level of prophecy, that means you are another intellectual person at another level. What are you not getting there? It's good word. You got to know now whatever we used to do or been doing, God, I have to go, I can't say take me higher and I still operate at the same level. I like this front row. They helping me. They helping me. Do we understand that? There must be a cry for more. Is there someone in here crying for more? Come, we don't put these fatigues on just to... Some of us spend money to get this. Because I didn't have this in my closet. I never wanted to dress in fatigues and that looks all right. Somebody was a visionary. I'm not, I can't promise you I'm going to get more, but I did suit up enough. Hallelujah. Listen, do not compromise or dilute of what God has ordained and given into your life. Don't compromise. You have too much instruction. Do not compromise it and do not allow it to be diluted because you are still craving the things of the world. Do not let it be diluted because no one seems to be getting with your gift. So if I compromise and, and, and go beneath what the Lord is telling me just to say and preach what is popular, you are compromising. But because there is a cosmic conflict, we don't dress up talking about it's war and we're going to praise God until the devil. It means we got to mean it because I already am aware in preparation of this message that many of us, including myself, are going to face something here. Some serious battles from the enemy, all because of what we have preached this weekend. Every seed you sowed, every sacrifice some of you made, the enemy is waiting to talk about, I got fit for it. And we taking it to the enemy's camp and all of that. And the devil's waiting on you at another level. But I want you to face your devil this week. Next week, next month, two months from now, wherever he's waiting on you, you let the devil know I am made for war. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Watch this generation. We are not the generation of yesterday. Here's where it controversial. Y'all still with me? Here's where it gets controversial. Because when everybody's saying the church don't pray like it used to, the church don't have power like it. When do we ever get an affirming word about the church? Everyone in the church is not crooked. Every church is not a cemetery. And because every church is not slaying folks on the floor, you cannot discount that they are doing other kingdom assignments. Because a lot of people fall on the floor this weekend. A lot of people have been falling out all service. Every service. Every
free hand. So when he said, don't get mad at me, I'll be out of here on the plane real soon. <laughs> so I know I just say what I say, but I know well, how to get out the back door. But the thing I need you to understand is this. God is positioning and repositioning you so that you are no longer falling under the guise of church antics. You are not deep because they keep laying hands on you. You are deep when they don't have to lay hands on you. I got help in the back. You are deep when you can now lay hands on somebody else. You are the ushers are deep when they can pick up your spirit at the door and say, Hold up, baby, before I take you to your seat. Can I tell you what the Lord just told me to tell you? They're not trying to take the place of the pastor. They're not trying to be the prophet of the house. I better get in my place. All they're trying to do is let the Lord use them. Aren't you so glad that your real understanding of the Holy Ghost is that all of us can prophesy? Aren't you glad your real understanding of the Holy Ghost that any of us can lay hands on the sick? Y'all don't get it? Watch this, you know it. You, you, you know it. We killed and wore out pastors back in the day. Because pastors had to prophesy and then you know what the problem was. Pastors had to be the doctor, they had to be a lawyer, and some of them did not even have an education. But we sent them to heaven before their time because all we passed, I got a lump right here. The doctor said, I'm going to need, what do you think? Whatever the doctor told you. I'm not going to play deep. Read your word. Romans chapter 8. There are things I don't know. But Romans chapter 8 lets me know the spirit knows. I just got caught. Bro. Turn on over there. It's in there. In Romans chapter 8, what you don't know to pray for, the spirit knows to pray for. So if you don't get the word you want from your leader or whoever else, go to God for yourself. I have nothing to prove with the ego. I have nothing to prove with the, what is it, darling? Yeah. Just tell me. Uh -huh. And you want the Lord to do this? And you and me. We just want to know, Pastor. Now, I don't have time for that. I got grandbabies to spoil. I got to go back to a city where they're killing black folks like it's crazy. And it's the, y'all watch the news. And it's the brothers and the sisters that are doing it. Lord, keep our members, keep our families. This is crazy. And that's how you know not only are we in the end times, but that's how you know that this is one of the greatest hours of the church. So with the visions that God has given you, they're not just because I want to do this and I want to do that. It's because the time is not what it used to be. So there's a whole lot that God has to get done in us right now. Oh, you need to tap somebody and say, there's a whole lot that God wants to do in you right now. I'm going to take my seat. Uh, come on. I know they told you, come on, you got to pray all night long. You don't got time for that now. Not when you're on assignment. You pray when you got time to pray. You pray like that when you have nothing else to do but pray. But right now, you got to you gotta write the vision and run. You got to read it while you're running. Y'all not hear this. You got to know that God is progressive. I wish I had a... Y'all tired now. I just, I'm a night person, so I just woke up. You got to understand that God is progressive and he is protected. He watches over his work. He want to make sure that what you told that sister was him. He want to make sure that what you told that group over there was them. Because he got to watch over what he said. And he'll embarrass you and put a stop to what you said. Y'all had a greater expectation of me than this. So 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Wherewith unto you are also called. And that word fight in your New Testament Greek, it doesn't mean just to put your dukes up. It means to keep fighting. Yeah. 
use one word in the English, we say fight. But in the Greek, it's the word keep fighting. And you have to keep, you don't just win a battle and think that's it. You don't win around with the enemy and think you can sit down. You got to fight and win and fight and win and fight and win and fight and win. Now watch this, because the first battle is your own flesh. See, you want to cast out demons, but you need to hold a mirror up. Lord, they, whoever's watching, they are quiet in here tonight. But you have to hold a mirror out and look at yourself because you know you better than anyone else. And you got to tell your flesh, I am crucifying you today. So watch this, Pastor. There's some things we gotta understand because anyone we put on the fatigues. So anyone that's in the armed forces, anyone that's military minded, understand. Y'all don't take notes, do you? Yeah, you got me. Well, understand that there are three things that fighting is absolutely necessary in order to obtain freedom. Anyone who's been in a war know that I, I'm not just employed to fight, but I'm fighting for a reason. And my reason is I need to be free. Where are my folks that are fighting to be free? I'm tired of coming to church fighting folks in the church. I'm tired of preachers telling me, look at your neighbor and say, you don't have to like me. You don't even know me. I'm back on this side of the church. You don't have to know. It doesn't matter if you like me. I'm only here for divine assignment. Then I'm going back home to my Bahama mama. And that won't be war. This is a story. You have to ask me later. Why did you call your wife a Bahama mama? It has everything to do with our trip to our first trip to the Bahamas. It has everything to do with that. But fighting is absolute. If y'all don't pick your minds up, y'all put your Bible back on your lap. <laughs> In your face, put your Bible right there. All I see is Jesus. All I see is Jesus. That's all you need to see. Fighting is absolutely necessary in order for you not just to obtain victory. Everybody wants you to get victory, but you need victory over you. Yeah. You need freedom from that demons that just lied low because you said you delivered. Remember, a young lady came to me at the service one Sunday and said, I just want you to know I'm delivered from fornication. And I looked at her and said, no, you just got married. Getting married is not your deliverance. Getting married should be your reward. But you know you are delivered. I better act like I'm, I better act like I'm from Florida, not from Philly. But you know you are delivered when you can sit right here. You know, I can be a little heavy. <laughs> I won't put this much weight. When you can sit, Gooby, off camera. When you can sit right here and not be tempted in the flesh. When you can lay hands and not try to feel all over. You are delivered when I can take this sister home and that's all it is. Do you hear what I'm saying? There's a difference in the... Yeah. I'm like you. I know, I know they're not going to have me back. So I just have to do it. <laughs> so y'all put me behind all these powerful women. And here come this boy. What is this guy doing? Doing what he does. So, so, so. You have to fight. Fighting is necessary in order for you to obtain your freedom. Number two, a good soldier must be 100% committed in order to win. You're in the fight to win. You're not in the fight just to win sometimes. You're not in the fight to say, I got victory today. Oh, but that slew foots up. No, 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 no. You are in it to win regardless if you feel like you're losing. Yeah. 
You are in it to win regardless if you don't feel you're making ground. I wish you would slap somebody and say, win this thing. Third thing is this. You ready for this? Once you're a soldier, you're always a soldier. These fatigues may go back on the hanger, but I'm still a soldier in the army of the Lord. I may not preach to you again, but I still will be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness in your CS? I want you to raise your hand in the air and wave it in the atmosphere and say, I'm made. I'm made for war. You're not made to be a whip. You're not made to be a coward. If your anointing is singing, then sing hell out of people. If your anointing is teaching, stop feeling like you gotta holler to get God's word across. Because teaching for the saints anyway, preaching is for the unsaint. Teaching is for the saint. That's, that's why I don't stress myself on Sunday morning to preach. Because if you really want to hear the word, let's tune in on the midweek. Y'all don't like me. Because I, I don't believe it. It's just to his gates of thanksgiving and to his courts of praise. I know what that scripture means. So when Sunday comes, we don't have to do anything but praise and worship and experience So I'm going to close now because I'm really having a good time up here. But I'm going to close with this final point. I want you to stand up and put your hand on your hip. And find you somebody that think like you. Find you somebody that share a like anointing. It may not be the person next to you. Young people, no cap. But I'm not, that's what they say up north. I don't know what they do down here. No cap. I still don't know what it means. They say no cap. Just speak English. Come on, we educate. But just find you somebody and look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, this is the day and this is the hour that the enemy is coming down. Satisfied 
in it. I'm comfortable with my own skin. I know there's good looking men out here, but I'm not tempted. Women, they're good looking other women. But don't you be tempted. You gotta fight this fight because it's trying to take over the church. It ain't creeping in the church, it's here. But you gotta make up in your mind that for God I live. For joy and say the ground that I sleep on is holy. It's holy. It's holy. Holy. Thank <laughs> you. 